Hello dear readers and subscribers, welcome to another video and today we're in my office. So this means two things, one, Perry is not going to be here, but she sends her best regards regardless and we're going to talk about some practical career advice. More specifically about contracts and agreements when you work with a gallery. In the art world, the use of contracts has become increasingly important when they agree to collaborate. And it is in the best interest of both the gallery and the artist to work with one, because it is the most secure and professional way to go about your business. However, in the art world, they are still not that common, as galleries hate administrative and bureaucratic tasks as much as the artists. It is to say, when working with a gallery, it seems as if this relationship seems to go beyond business, and is based on friendship, trust, and a close collaboration of loyalty. However, before engaging in such a friendship and such a collaboration, it is important to know on which terms you should agree with such a friendship or collaboration. Therefore, we will discuss the best practices, the most common agreements between the artist and the gallery to professionalize your exhibiting practice or simply to know what you're doing when you're about to exhibit with your first real gallery. In the art world, there are numerous multi-million dollar artist gallery collaborations that have never seen a single contract. And the reason why this works so well is that in the art world, there are some unwritten rules, some unwritten common agreements that are ubiquitous throughout the gallery industry. Simply by following these conventions and rules, the collaboration can be fruitful, professional and without conflict. So what are these unwritten rules exactly? First and foremost, the commission. The gallery and the artist split the commission on sales evenly, 50-50. A 50% share for the artist and a 50% share for the gallery. This 50% should come from the listed retail price, so excluding of taxes. Next, the production cost and efforts. In return for that 50% that the gallery receives, they will take care of all the production costs related to the exhibition or related to pro providing the platform for the artist to exhibit and sell their work. This includes, of course, paying the rent for a gallery space, but also that the walls are nicely painted, that there is staff, that there are drinks at the opening, that there is promotional activities, they uh, invest in PR agencies, etc. etc. These costs cannot be deducted in any way or form from the artist's 50%. So all income for the gallery comes from sales, from generating sales and receiving their 50% commission. So don't let the gallery charge you any promotional activities or rent or fees or whatever. However, in a similar vein, the artist is responsible for all the production costs of the artworks they provide. Meaning the artist cannot charge the gallery art supplies or deduct it from the retail price before splitting half and half. You are responsible of providing the artworks the gallery of providing the environment for the sales and exhibitions. Next, the shipping costs. Some would advise that all artists should never accept to pay any shipping cost for their artworks. And when you become a bit more established or a bit more in demand, that's certainly true. However, when starting out, and especially with entry-level galleries who are also struggling, it is very common practice and very accepted and reasonable that these costs are borne equally. Meaning that the shipping costs from the studio to the gallery are at the expense of the artist, and then that the shipping costs back to the artist studio or to the new collector are at the expense of the gallery. When they ship the works to a new collector, then most often the gallery will charges to the collector in question. On the other hand, if you become more established, not only will take your gallery care of all these shipping costs, but also for instance, flight tickets, train tickets, hotels, restaurants, and additional expenses. Next, we have sales and exclusivity. It is unacceptable in the art world for an artist when working with a gallery to go behind the back of the gallery director, meaning selling a work that was consigned to the gallery or was theirs to sell, to sell it directly to another client who perhaps might have even discovered you via the gallery, nevertheless, because some collectors try to strike a bargain by contacting the artist directly in the hope that they can have the artwork at half of the price, but that's another topic. So when it is theirs to sell, never sell it directly. This will be the end of your collaboration and also the end of possible future collaborations. As a result, it's also very common that the artist and the gallery agree a specific lending period, meaning that the artworks are given after the show still theirs to sell or remain in the storage of the gallery. 
Then in the case of exclusivity, when there is an ongoing collaboration and the gallery is representing the artist, then it is very common that the gallery becomes the exclusive dealer and distributor of that artist, of all his work in a specific city, country, continent, or sometimes even worldwide. However, in return, there must be some guarantees for the artist. For instance, a specific number of shows, international art fair exposure, or perhaps even a specific amount of sales that the gallery buys in advance, or perhaps even guaranteeing a minimum income for the artist throughout the year. These are, in a nutshell, the most common agreements between the artist and the gallery. So you must be aware of these agreements, not only to come across professional and that you know what you're doing, but also to be aware when something is not correct. For instance, some red flags are, as we mentioned, a gallery who is charging you for promotional fees or charging you a participation fee, or that you as the artist have to pay a share of the participation fee for the gallery in an art fair, or that you as the artist have to take care of the invoicing and the client contact, which is part of their task and how they justify their commission. Or sometimes even when the gallery is happy with a lower commission than 50%, then most often something is not right and it's more like a store and not really an art gallery, which is indirectly in the long term not beneficial for artists as well. If the gallery proposes to work with you following the arrangements I just mentioned, then you're all right and then this is a healthy and common art world artist gallery collaboration. However, even with these general guidelines, with these unwritten business ethics of the art world, it is very common that there are some conflicts or some minor issues because some of these agreements are up for interpretation. For instance, some galleries and also some artists can get very creative with the 50-50% split in commission. Some galleries will deduct the VAT first and then split it in half and not offering you 50% of the listed retail price. And on the other hand, artists would charge an additional VAT when invoicing the gallery for their share. If those are the terms that you or your gallery wants to work, that's fine, but they have to be specified, preferably in a contract, but we'll get to that later. However, generally speaking, it is 50-50% of the listed retail price. Another common point of disagreement is when an artist sells an artwork directly to a client. This is very sensitive, delicate matter in the art world. If you would consider doing this, then please note that this will be the end of your collaboration with that gallery. Even if they had nothing to do in providing the lead for the sale, you are taking away a piece of art that they could have sold. So you are taking away a piece of potential income. So make sure that you are very careful with these kind of deals. Then the production costs are also a recurring issue because here they are also kind of up for interpretation. Generally speaking, the artist takes care of the artworks and the gallery takes care of the exhibition. However, sometimes these two spheres seem to intertwine. For instance, what about the framing? It is part of the artwork, but it is intended specifically for the exhibition. Or what about an institute installation or uh, the artist needs a projector to show their video work? Who is paying for this projector, for this equipment? So these are things that you should talk about and put in writing prior to your show. Shipping costs are also a common issue. Who pays them and when? Especially with entry-level galleries who are struggling to survive because it is still the third biggest cost after uh, art fair participations and rent. Who is going to pay for the shipping cost in, for instance, if the artist determines to terminate their collaboration and all of a sudden the gallery is being demanded to pay expensive shipping costs to return artworks of an artist they have fallen out with. So these are also things that are common issues that we see very frequently and th that you should include in your contract or in writing or simply have had a chat about it prior to your collaboration. Payment can also be a recurring issue. Some artists prefer to be paid the minute the artwork is sold. Others uh, like to be paid after the end of the show. Then we have other galleries who like to pay at fixed points in the year, for instance, at the end of every quarter, and others wait for months and months before they actually make their payment. So try to set out a specific term for the payment date. To conclude, some other minor issues can also arise when it comes to, for instance, who pays the dinner after the show, or for instance, uh, the artist not being communicative enough, or the gallery not sharing their clientele, and vice versa, that the artist prefers not to share their own personal clients uh, with the gallery, or that the gallery did not provide the installation views of the show to the artist, or that the artist did not provide updated information and images of their works, resume, etc. So to avoid all these disagreements and frustration and perils, 
let's discuss solid contracts and also the templates we have designed with Kai next. The two Kai template contracts are contracts that are not only very useful as legal documents, even if your gallery prefers not to work with a contract, they are a valuable resource despite its more legal or uh, formal form. They are a valuable resource to know what are the right terms for you as an artist. In short, there are two different types of contracts or terms that you would need to know or need to use when collaborating with a gallery. The first is the consignment agreement. In this case, there is a one-time collaboration, for instance, an exhibition or a specific period that they want to sell a specific set of artworks. In this case, the contracts should include a list with all the consigned works, including their retail price, the terms of sale and also all the agreements we talked about when it comes to the shipping costs, the production costs in case of an exhibition, but also storage, liability, etc. Next, we have the representation agreement. In this case, instead of a one-time collaboration, there is an ongoing collaboration. So, uh, for instance, after your first successful exhibition with uh, the gallery, or when you are already in demand, the gallery wants to represent you and uh, be your gallery, your main gallery, throughout the year in a specific area or city. Then it is important to set up terms of representation, terms of exclusivity, different terms of sales, because as they are your main gallery, what if you sell artworks uh, directly or via an external gallery, etc, etc. So here the checklist disappears and there are a number of other articles that become very important. Also, for instance, when it comes uh, to the shipping costs. Uh, both contracts are very similar, uh, especially when it comes to the more stock paragraphs, meaning uh, copyrights, liability, storage, uh, validity of ownership, etc, etc. However, they are very different when it comes to to those first few paragraphs. The checklist only for the consignment works, the terms of sale differ, and also uh, the terms of exclusivity and of representation. So how should you use such a contract? And what are the alternatives when your gallery prefers not to work with a contract? Should you mistrust them? Well, the answer is no. As I stated at the introduction of this video, uh, the galleries, they also hate uh, administrative tasks and bureaucratic aspects of their art business as much as artists. The thing you also need to realize is that for an artist, you'll work with one up to five galleries. However, a gallery works with 10 up to 50 artists. So it's a lot more paperwork, a lot more contracts, a lot more different terms, etc., etc. Especially for galleries with little to no staff. So they prefer to be a little bit more flexible. It's a lot more convenient and simply trust the artist and trust the ethics of the art world, which is, and how bad as it may sound, actually also very efficient. My advice is to follow the lead of a gallery. If you have a one-time show, it's not necessary to really impose that consignment contract. If they are not proposing to use a contract, you can simply fleetingly suggest it. If they're fine with it, they fill it in. If they do not want to work with a contract for the aforementioned reasons, but you do want to have something in writing, which I advise you to have, you can simply have an informal chat with the gallery director and afterwards, Put it down in writing in an email. Here we can keep things light and cool by being quick with a joke, for instance stating that otherwise you would forget uh, what we, we've agreed um, and try to reformulate the terms from the contract, for instance, in a less legal and more personal informal manner. As you will become more in demand and more established, you can start to determine your terms much more yourself. But at first, when you're a new artist, don't impose yourself and your terms and your contract too much. As long as everything is in line with the terms of our contract and the things, the agreements we've talked about already, then everything is fine. Be professional and be assertive, but don't fuss about minor issues. For instance, you'll make more money when there is more than just one show, instead of being difficult about the costs of the shipping to the gallery or about the frames. Think in the long term. Play it smart. To avoid making any mistakes and to make sure that you have all the information, feel free to consider purchasing our contract templates, the consignment agreements and the representation agreements um, for either purpose or for either type of collaboration you have in the form. I will link to them in the description below and I will also link in the description to the complete article for this video for more information. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Feel free to watch our video on the different career paths for artists next 
debunking some common misunderstandings about working with art galleries, support us on Patreon, and please consider subscribing to stay posted for more contemporary arts. Bye.